It would seem that with the um, article about an imam or reading out a prayer or at Redbridge Council and the usage of Paul Golding, Simon Webb has descended into the bottom of the barrel and is scraping out the detritus at the bottom of the barrel. Really. We're using Paul Golding. We'll get back to Paul in a minute. For those unfamiliar with Paul, we'll get right back to him. Let me share a screen about Redbridge Council. Here's somebody from 2021 talking about the humanist chapelless is a first for Redbridge. This was context behind it. As a couple of people who actually did some research, which the so-called pseudo-historian Webb never does, Redbridge Council has used chaplains from numerous backgrounds I'm delighted to be appointed as chaplain to the next mayor of Redbridge, the first time a humanist has held this road. Functions include speaking at the full start of full council meetings and attending commemorations such as Remembrance Day. My group of partner of Humanists UK was formed in 2012 to bring non-religious people together. A Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh and Jewish representative also gave each gave a reading at a service making the start of that mayoral year. So it's not as though there's only Muslims doing readings up there in Redbridge, Simon. We're getting right back to that wonderful figure, Paul Golding. This is Paul Golding. showing. This is Paul showing his wonderful patriotic credentials here at the Cenotaph with a pair of knickers on his head. Britain at its finest, you might say. Not really. He's not exactly Winston Churchill or Nelson or Montgomery or, you know, any figure that I'd point to in British history who, for all their flaws, can be said to have accomplished great things. This is a man who is a complete tit. He turned up at the Cenotaph with a load of boot boys with a pair of what has been variously reported as knickers or panties on his head, half cut. This is who our historian is using for a source. Really, Simon, that's what you're reduced to and you're calling yourself a historian? The comedy value is immense. Here's Paul as well, looking like, um, well, a rather stereotypical thug, really, to be quite frank. It's unfair because there are, no, there are people who look like that that are nothing like that. But uh, unfortunately, Paul does rather look the part there. Paul Golding was a British National Party 7th District Councillor for St. Mary's Ward in Swanley from 2009 to 2011. Yes, he was. Until he then got expelled from the BNP for physically attacking Lawrence Rustam, a BNP barking councillor who's half Turkish. And then Golding turned up, as you saw in that last picture, wearing women's underwear on his head. Stunning. A stunning display there. He's also um, been in involved in sort of a number of other issues, a bit of domestic violence. Let's have a look at that. Britain's right first Paul Golding admits attack in secret recording. Over the last 18 months, Britain has first been seeking support in Northern Ireland. Let's not forget that and Britain first has lovely links with some extreme groups on of loyalists up there in, in Northern Ireland. The leader of the far-right group, Britain First, has been secretly calling the mountain violently attacking his former deputy, Chida Franson. The revelation emerged as part of an investigation by BBC Northern Ireland Spotlight. It helped tighten the audio while looking into Britain First and its leader, Paul Golding. The group has been increasingly active in Northern Ireland. Over the last 18 months, he has been seeking support in Northern Ireland and set up its Pi headquarters in the Shankill area, road area, Belfast. He has also carried out leaflet drops in many towns, including Bangor, Newton Odds, Lisbon, Lurgan, Portadown, Portarush and Derry. Previously, a couple in a secret recording made Mr. Golding his head saying he has assaulted both Jada, Franson and another woman. 
Spotlight spoke to a dozen ex-witnesses of Britain for some from Northern Ireland who personally witnessed her being aware of these assaults. Jada Franson has confirmed the allegations are true. She said she and Paul Golding were a couple for a short time when she joined Britain first in 2014. After that personal relationship ended, she and others said the violence continued over a period of roughly four and a half years while she was with her party. She quit Burton first at the start of the year. The secret reading recording obtained by the BBC was made in December 2015. In it, Jada's head repeatedly kept challenging Paul Golding about the violent attacks he has reflected on her. He never denies the claims in the recording. In one excerpt, the pair can be heard discussing an attempted assault that Golding had currently carried out on France and earlier that day. In the audio, Golding says, What happened this morning? You weren't innocent. Franson responds, I didn't come near you. You tried to come at me. I tried to hit you. You said you were going to kill me and threw a bottle of drink in my face. Golding then claims driving me- mentally crazy is just as bad as physical. Franson asked Golding if this is what he said to another woman she suggested he used to physically hit. She said, every run drives you crazy, so you beat them. That's your excuse. Is that point that Golding has heard admitting to assault on both friends and a second unnamed woman when he says the only girls I lay on a finger on my life is name of women withheld and you. So, Mr. Webb, this is the man you are turning to for evidence. A man who turns off half cut at the cenotaph with knickers on his head and who domestically abuses women violently and has links to terrorist groups. Great. Uh, fantastic sorting. I'll bet that I think most of your viewers won't watch this, but a few of them who do find me annoying also seem to find me annoying enough to watch and do jokes about my hair colouring or whatever. But if they watch this, they might think about why are you using Mr. Nicker on the head here?